If you would, take your Bibles, Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. You know, many times we hear the word hallelujah, and, and I always got to remind myself, what does that word mean, right? What does that word mean? And uh, uh, Megan, if you were up there, if you could hit the ne- next setting on the lights for us to bring those lights up a little bit. When we think about the word hallelujah, right, we, well, I always think, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means God be praised. God be praised. So your hallelujah means something. Can you say amen? Your hallelujah means something. And uh it, it makes all the difference. So this morning, I want you to continue to give your hallelujah, to give God your praise. And when we look at last week where we started with this thought of the fight of the fight for joy, uh, we talked about several different things in reference to joy. And this morning, I want to reflect a little bit on that. I want you to go with me, Isaiah 55, what a great passage for us to, to dive into today. And we're looking at this, this theme, and I want us to... Uh, do a short review this morning and, and thinking about what is joy. The fight for joy, what is it? Uh, we talked about one main theme as we opened it up, and we said that joy was not a magical feeling and it wasn't an emotion, right? We said it wasn't the absence of troubles or what? Trials. But joy is a what, church? Oh, I did terrible. You didn't even remember. Ah, I got to do this better. Uh, joy is a gift, everybody, right? So joy is a what, church? Yeah. That's right. It's a gift. You know, it doesn't mean that you're going to have the absence of troubles or trials. It doesn't mean it's a magical emotion or a feeling. But love, I mean, joy is a gift. And we talked about the foundation of that joy is love. We went to Galatians chapter 5. Remember, as we looked at the nine fruit, fruits of the Spirit, not fruits of the Spirit. It's all one. You get the whole nine, right? You get all of them at once. How many of you are glad you got all nine? Say amen. How many of you would say your husband, wife, or friend would say you need a little help with a few, right? All right, amen. Uh, we all need help with, with one of those nine, that's true, but this, this, this particular series we're focusing on joy, and love is the foundation of that. We talked about how the Spirit does something uncommon in the believer. Aren't you glad that the Spirit can do something in, uncommon in you? We talked about that when love is the foundation, that love does a couple of things. It changes your motives. It changes your objectives, and it changes your priorities. How many of you have experienced that? Say, come on. You've experienced that, right? When when love is the foundation in your life, you have some new motives. You have some new objectives. You have some new priorities. And so God, the Spirit of God, when we receive Him, and we said very clearly last week that this is when you receive Him as Savior, when the Spirit moves in, He does something uncommon in you. We talked about obedience being that secret and how that, a believer, when, when we love God, it's out of love that we do obey Him. And that's where the secret of, of joy came even in Jesus' life when He was here on earth. Remember the passage that we talked about last week, right? For the joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross, despising the shame. Does that sound like fun? No. Does that sound like happiness? No. But does that sound like joy? Yes. Because joy is found in obedience, and Jesus found His joy in obedience even to the cross. And we also talked about the five don'ts that keep to keep us out of the way so the spirit of joy can have its way. And I want you to just remember them as we get started again this morning. Don't give your flesh what it wants. It's not that you can't have something nice in your life. It's not that you can't buy something new or buy something that you need for your family or buy something that you have been looking for or wanting, but it's not to give your flesh its way every time, not to give your flesh what it wants. And remember, we said fasting was a reminder of that. When you fast from food, it reminds you that you don't need to let your flesh have its way. And I need reminded of that. You do too. And that's why God gave us the principle of tith- or not only tithing, but also fasting. So don't miss your morning cup of what, church? That's right. Joe is what you need, but you got to have your joy. Don't miss your cup of joy. Remember it said in that passage that if we're going to uh, live in the Spirit, we got to what? Walk in the Spirit, all right? If you're going to live in the Spirit, you got to do what, church? you got to walk in the Spirit. That's the daily, one at a time, next morning, the next morning, the next morning, getting my cup of joy, but getting my cup of joy uh, as well because it's gonna, you're going to see three things we talked about last week, that if you do not get that cup of joy, you're going to be going for your glory and not God's glory. You're going to be in this position of provoking others 
in the wrong way, provoking them, irritating them in a negative format. If you do not get your joy, if you do not walk in, uh, in his spirit, in his way, and get yourself out of the way, you're going to go for your own glory. You're going to be, become a negative irritation, and you're going to be jealous. All three of those go together, hand in hand. And we said last week, God, help me. Which, which one of these do I need to put in my hands, and which one do I need to lay at the altar, either at the church house or at my own altar at home? I hope you have an altar at home, by the way. Somewhere where you kneel and pray. Can you say amen? Come on, church. You're really making me work for it this morning. Uh, I said, you need to have an altar at home. You believe that? Did Daniel have an altar at home? Yes, he did. You need to have a place at this altar here that's your spot. But you need to have one at home. You need to bring that thing, that, that item to God and say, God, I've been going for my own glory. God, I've been a super irritable in a negative way. God, I've had this, this, uh, this uh, issue with jealousy, God, and I'm ready to name it and give it to you because we know that the overflow of joy, the goal of that is it will change the way you treat others. How many of you experienced that this week? Come on. I'm waiting for someone to help me know I did a good job last week. All right, you, It changes the way you treat people, right, Kent? Right, Shane? It changes the way we, we treat people because I have joy, so it changes the way I treat people, but it also changes the way that I respond to everyday life moments. When things don't go my way, when a trouble hits me square in the face, when a trial comes right at me, I can still have joy, and it changes the way that I respond because we said this last week, total joy is what, church? Total obedience. I'll help. Total joy is total obedience. And so if I can get this in my mind and in my heart, it will change the way that I fight for joy. And that's what I want you to understand. It is not just this game of joy, right? It's not a game of joy. It's a fight for joy. Can somebody say amen? I'm telling you, uh, in America, we, we, we live as kings, and none of us do real good with joy consistently. Can you say amen? We live like kings. We have everything we want. We can get what we want if we want to sacrifice for it. And let me tell you this morning, I need joy, and you need joy because the world needs joy. What do I mean by that? Because there's only some, there's only, there's only joy that comes from Jesus. We can have happiness in the world, but you can't have joy. Because the joy comes from the Spirit, and the love is foundation. And if I don't be careful, I'm going to be preaching that whole message again. So let's move on. So today, in your handout, joy moves when God moves. I want to show you this gauge that I want to remind you of. When your obedience goes up, what else goes up? Your joy, because total, total joy is in total obedience. And there seems to be this slight delay. I want you to catch this some morning. There, there's a slight delay. When your obedience starts happening, your joy doesn't like automatically follow it. There's like this slight delay, and you feel that joy move in. When you know that you have taken the right step in your walk with Jesus, see, that's what I felt when I asked Jesus to be my Savior, was I knew that I received him as my Savior, and I knew that I was in, in obedience to him because he... He took the price for me, and he wants me to obey him in that salvation. He makes my spirit alive. And when I was 10 years old and I make that decision, you, you know the peace and joy that came in? You, you remember that? And you're like, man, what is this? And the joy and peace that was there. And so I want you to realize that you'll find this in your life. When, you're, when your obedience starts to go down, there's going to be a slight delay in your joy going down. So this week, watch the gauges of your life, but I want you to see this this morning as we focus on joy moves when God moves. Joy moves when God moves, and we go to Isaiah 55, if you would go there, if you're not already, tap there, or turn there. And we're going to see that there's an invitation to see God move. And when I started looking at this the last couple of days in my preparation, I started on Monday, Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, is kind of where I get my heart for, for the next weekend, and and as I looked at that, not even know what was happening, and then Friday, Saturday, and then last night as I was reviewing and I saw all that was happening on the news, I was like, God, we need an invitation for you to move. God, we want you to move. And I want you to see this in, in Isaiah 55, verse 17. Go to the verse right at the end of, of 54. And I want you to see the movement of God's kindness. It says, no weapon that is formed against you shall what? Shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee 
and judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage or the promise of the servants of the Lord, and their, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I want you to see, even before we get into 55, you can see God's kindness, and you can see the setup for this, this what we would call the invitation to see God move. See, joy moves when God moves, so if we're going to have joy movement in our life, we're going to have to see God movement in our life. And so how do we see God movement in our life? This is where Isaiah 55 comes in, because God moves, and He gets our attention. God moves, and He gets our attention. In chapter 55, starting in verse 1, right off the beginning. Hey, 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 right? Oh, did I scare you? Sorry. Uh, he raised he out, hey, hey, hey. You know, Santa Claus, what does he say? Ho, 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 right? Everybody say like Santa Claus, ho, ho, ho. I can't hear you. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas, right? Santa Claus, get your attention here. We got a different type of hey, hey, hey. Everybody say hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, hey. I want you to realize God's going for your attention. In Isaiah 55, he's going to get their attention. The very first word is ho, or hey, 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 you there, hello. It's like, I want your attention. So God moves and gets your attention with the very first proclamation. But I want you to see as you move through this, this is a, a loud outcry. He says, everyone that is thirsty, and as I drank uh, a water this morning, and I thought about those last couple drops in the bottle, in that bottle, that someone who's super thirsty wouldn't care if it was just a couple drops. They wouldn't care if I had just drank out of that bottle. They would want it because of their thirst. He says, everyone, of, uh, everyone that is thirsty. We talked about a couple of weeks ago that Jesus, right, he was, he was salty, and there were some people who were thirsty for him, and they were following him. So this, this loud outcry is a, is a short, significant appeal to all the people here. He's, he's using this, and he's saying, pay attention, because what I'm asking you to pay attention is for your own good. I, uh, I remember a, a story of Chase and I. We were walking out of Burger King, and the, our kids, four kids, were, were younger. I think the oldest was maybe around eight years old. And we were walking right in front of the drive through you know, exit, and we were coming back out to the car, and we had all the kids' hands, right? And we're getting ready to walk across, and we go to walk, and I think Tori was the lead. She, like, dashed out in front, you know, and all the other kids uh, started running, and I, and I did that. I was like, hey, 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 and I started yelling out to them. I was like, hey, you're going you're gonna to run out there, and you're just going to, you know, you're going uh, to wonder what happened. And I was like, what am I saying, you know? I'm, like, so terrified of what could have happened that I don't even know what I'm saying. Like, I'm like, you're going to just wonder what happened. And Stace just laughed and laughed at me, you know. She's like, what does that mean? You're just wonder what's going to happen. And I just remember being so urgent about trying to get their attention. And that's the urgency that we hear here in this very first time. I want you to tune in to what's happening because in this first ten, or excuse me, first five verses, it's five times Isaiah tries to get their attention with either the word come, behold, or hey. This conversation is being overemphasized. Have you ever had someone uh, that, that's super excited and they just say the same word over, oh, hey, we're going to go here, and then, hey, we're going to do this, and hey, we're going to do that, overemphasizing this word, and you're like, okay, you got my attention, right? And that's the feeling here. This, this is, that's the emotion here in these first five verses. So I want you to see that it gets their attention. I want you to see that when it gets, gets their attention, that it is to everyone. It's to everyone that he wants their attention. And he's calling out to them. And when we look at verses 1 through 5, you go to the second part of that verse there, and it says, come ye to the waters. It's this invitation to everyone. It says, if you're thirsty, come. If, you ha if you, he that hath no money, how many of you would agree with that? You don't have no money, say amen. amen. Now, we kid around, right? But we got plenty of money. We're in America. We live as kings compared to the rest of the world. But you can kind of see where he's going. He says, he that hath no money. Those who, who do thirst, and they, they answer the Lord's invitation. It says, he says, come ye, buy and eat. You don't need to bring any money. I want you to come, buy and eat. He says, come uh, to the new wine or to the, to the fresh vine and, and get milk without money and without price. It's all free. Everybody say, I like free stuff. And we like free stuff. 
The entrance into the, I want you to realize the entrance into the Christian life is free, but also what else is free is the growth and the gift of grace. Don't stop growing when you just receive Christ. Keep growing. He says, he calls out to them, he says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? All of these things are not going to satisfy. He says, why, why are you spending money on these things that don't satisfy? He says, you're looking for joy, right? You're looking for joy, because we're going to see this later in the chapter. You're looking for joy in the empty things of life. He says, I want, I want to offer you this, this invitation. It's to everyone. How many of you glad you've been invited? It's to everyone. And then it's to this, it's to fullness. It's to fullness. And I want you to realize that each of us can have this fullness that Isaiah is talking about. trying to get my clicker to work. I don't think it's going to work. Very good. So it's to everyone, it's to fullness. You remember um, when you look at our verse for this month, John 15, 11, I hope you've been working on that. Because this fullness that he wants us to have is found not in your joy, but in Jesus' joy. He says, this stuff satisfies not. And then he goes in the middle of verse 2, and he says these words. says, hearken diligently. Everybody say, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hearken diligently. What is he saying? It's just not to hearken diligently when we feel like it. He says, I want you to hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye of that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness, incline your ear and come unto me. And he says, I want you to hear. And your soul shall live. It will be, uh, there'll be life there. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the, sh- even the sure mercies of David. He gives us an example of what he's talking about, the fullness of David's life. So three things there, maybe a side note for you. Is in this fullness, three things to do. Listen carefully. Number two, eat what is good. And number three, delight in abundance. A lot of times we'll listen carefully, but then we'll eat the bad, right? When I talk about eating the bad, I'm saying when someone has a provoking spirit towards you or they're having an irritating negative spirit towards you and you start listening to that. Let me tell you this morning, don't listen to that. That is not what's good. So he says here, listen, listen, hearken diligently, listen carefully, but eat what is good. Decide not to eat what is coming at you that is not good. And then he says, delight in abundance. Enjoy the abundance. He said, there's a fullness for you. And there's where our verse comes in. And I want you to say it with me this morning. Say it with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Do you notice the my joy as we said? Jesus is saying this when he's talking about abiding with him. And he says that my joy might remain in you. I want you to look at that word might in that verse. It happens twice. Might remain in you and might be full. You know, there's a lot left up to you in this walk. There's a lot left up to you. It's your movement as well as God's movement. Can you say amen? Joy moves when God moves. And when, when we're in this position of coming to him and listening to his invitation, he says, that's what I want you to see, is that you'll have my joy. He says back in Isaiah, it says, Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people. He's talking about David here, right? He's giving us an example of David, and he's talking about the fullness of David. And he says, in David's life, he says this. Notice the words, Behold, again, hey, I have given for him for a witness to the people. I want you to notice that word for there. Maybe circle it, underline it. He has given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. And you could even substitute the word to there for the word for because it's for the people. Notice that David was a leader and a commander for the people, not to the people. I want you to realize the reason why David was there was for the purpose of his people, of God's people. He led them as a shep- with a shepherd's heart and he genuinely desired God's best for them. 
I want you to see that example this morning because you go into the next verse and he says, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. He says there's going to be blessing to you from where you don't even know where it's coming from. And nations that know not, that knew not thee shall run unto thee because the Lord thy God. Do you know why America is great? Because it was founded on the Lord our God. Did you know America is great because it was founded on the Lord our God? I didn't know if you heard me the first time. Did you know our nation is great because it was founded on the Lord our God? And that's where our strength comes from. And that he is he is giving, he has given us these things for a reason. And he gives David for an example. And he says, For the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. God has blessed you. It says, Why do the nations I want us to realize, why do the nations flock to David in in this example or to Israel? It's because the Lord has lifted them up. Because he has given them the the blessing of restoration. So not only does God move and gets our attention, but he also moves to get uh, or to uh, offer an invitation. And then third, he requires our intention. He requires our intention. You might have to help me up there, Megan. Uh, the clicker's not working. He's gonna ha- we're going to have to not only get, let, allow him to get our attention, he offers the invitation, but then he requires our intention. Uh, if you had to answer the, the, the answer to that word uh, intention, what would you say it means? It means a plan or an aim. I want to ask you right now, what is your spiritual plan for your life? I didn't say your retirement plan. I didn't say job plan, but what's your spiritual plan for your life? And what's your spiritual plan for this year? What's your spiritual plan for this week? Are you going to get that cup of joy? Are you going to have a direction? Are you going to have a purpose? This is for you to decide, not your pastor to decide. This is for you to decide, am I going to um, have the right intention? So not only does he get our attention, he offers the invitation, and now he requires our intention. So what is your aim? What is your plan? And I want you to see this this morning. Joy moves when God moves. And God moves when a couple things we're going to find in verse 6. Look at verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. I want you to maybe write on the side of your Bible there next to the, that, that phrase, I want you to write the one word, urgency. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. It's a sense of urgency to God's people. Ask the person next to you, do you have urgency? Ask them again, do you have urgency? I'm asking us all this morning, do I have, listen to me, do I have urgency? And this week, I I hate to tell you, my urgency was down and I missed an opportunity. And God knows what opportunity I'm talking about. And I let it go by. And I didn't have the urgency I needed to in my heart for this person. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. What does he mean by that? He's pushing this urgency, the intention, the plan, the aim, where are you going, this urgency, do I have it? If I could sum it up, this is is the time, right, that God wants us to look for him and find him, to seek him now. This isn't that God is hidden. I don't want you to think that God is not hidden. Um, This isn't the only time he can be found, but I want you to realize the urgency. It's not that we can't find him or that he's hidden. He's he's asking them to incline their hearts to look for him. Are we looking for him? In my day-to-day walk, am I looking for him to move in my life? Do I just check the box in the morning, get my cup of joy, and I don't look for him anymore that day? He says, I want you to continue to look for me in my movement. It says, call ye upon him while he is near. Aren't you glad he's near? It says, let the wicked forsake his way. That's me and you too, not just the world. He says, let us all forsake our own way, get ourselves out of the way so God can have his way. And the unrighteous man, his, what's the next word? His thoughts. It's amazing to me how much our thoughts can take us away from our joy, how much Our minds, our thoughts can take us away from looking for God. You see, wickedness may be demonstrated, you could say, in our actions, but unrighteousness can be found in our thoughts. I want you to realize this morning the battleground for a good walk with the Lord is found in your mind and in your thoughts. They say that we have 
approximately 70,000 thoughts a day. Everybody said, that's a bunch. That's a bunch. And out of 70,000 thoughts that will go through my mind this week, how many of those will I be able to direct to see where God's moving? How many of those will I be able to direct if I should take of this or leave it alone? Is this of God or not of God? So it's a fight for joy. Everybody say it's a fight for joy. It's a fight for joy. It's not a game for joy. And I want you to realize you've got to be in this mentality of fight. I was so encouraged when I saw President Trump go, fight, fight, fight. I was like, you go, man. Let's go. Let's, let's get America back to God. There's no doubt God spared his life last night. God's movement. The fight for joy. What will it look like for us? So I want you to see this. God moves when we want to seek him. God moves when we want to seek him. The second thing is this, is that God moves when we want forgiveness. Not only do we want forgiveness, but we want to give forgiveness. Because see, a lot of times when you're unforgiving, you're only giving up your joy. You're just giving it up. So the unforgiveness that I need, or the forgiveness I need, and, and, and am I willing to give forgiveness to others, or do I have the spirit of unforgiveness? He says, let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. Notice this, and it says, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Can you say those two last words? Abundantly pardon. You know, when I was in trouble as a kid, I want my mom and dad to abundantly pardon. And God wants to abundantly pardon us. And one of the things that's killing America and the churches is our self-righteousness. When we quit hitting our chest and we quit saying, God, be merciful to me, I'm just a sinner. God, be merciful to me, I'm just a sinner. God, I want you to move in my life. And our self-righteousness is stealing our joy. And, and he says, I want you to want forgiveness. So when we look at our own personal lives and we look at where I'm at and what's happening for me, will I be able to, will I be able to take this step? Will I be able to say, God, I want to seek you. God, I want you to move and I want to uh, have forgiveness, but I want to also give forgiveness. And then verse 8 and 9. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. How many thoughts do you have every day? God doesn't think any of your thoughts. But he probably will share a thought with you. But you can grab a hold of that thought. And I want you to see this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. We get in a lot of trouble when we expect that God should think like us. Can you say amen? We get into a lot of trouble when we expect God to think like us. He says, uh, uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. When we get into a lot of trouble, not only when we think God should think like us, but when we think God should act like us, that's when we get ourselves in a lot of trouble. And I want you to catch this. For the, as the heavens are what? Higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Don't, don't miss this this morning. Just a simple application. The difference and the distance between God and man is obviously revealed here, and I want you to notice why it's revealed. Everybody say, why? I want you to see why it's revealed, and it's not to discourage us from seeking him, but to keep us humble as we seek him. He says, I want you to know how high my ways are and how high my thoughts are. They're as far removed as the earth is from heaven, but don't, don't be, don't be uh, um, discouraged, and don't be uh, fooled that I will come down, and I will visit you, and I will give you my thoughts. How many of you want his thoughts? Say amen. amen. That's where we're at right now, number three, is that we want his thoughts. God, I want your thoughts. God, I want your next step. God, I'm urgent about this. And Lord, I want to do it humbly. In verses 10 and 11. It says, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not hither, but watereth what? The earth. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And maketh up to bring forth a bud. What happens when, it, when, it, when, the, when, the, uh, when the stem buds? Isn't it beautiful, right? 
And it says that it may give seed. So out of that bud comes seed. And it said to the sower and the bread, to the eater. Now listen to this. It says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me empty or void. It says, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And that shall prosper in the things whereunto I send it. Number four is this. God moves when we want to use God's word. Not only use it in your life. Here, listen to me, Christian. Listen to me, believer. Listen to me, church. And this is where we fail. We get our cup of joy, but we never use his word in someone else's life. It can be a believer, but it also could be the lost. How will we, and I say we on purpose, how will we share his word this week? Because it has a purpose. Everybody said it has a purpose. Listen to me. What he gives to you tomorrow morning, you need for your week, but someone else needs it too. And we got to open our eyes and we got to see that this is a fight for joy, but it's a fight for the lives of others that need joy. And when I give what God has for me in the morning and I hold it to myself, I'm not letting his work continue its purpose. And so this week, church, I want you to be looking for God moving in lives around you. When you get a text or you get uh, that sad face, someone at work, and you want to just encourage them, say, God, I don't know what to say, but God, would you help me use your word to touch their lives? Because he says it will not return empty, it will not return void. I want you to see the rain and the snow eventually do return to heaven. He gives us this example. Rain and snow eventually do return to heaven, but not before it accomplishes the purpose on earth. And I want you to see that God's word will not return void. If I will use it, if you will use it, not only for our own sake, but for the sake of others, is that it's not empty and it's not pointless. People a lot of times have to eat their own words, but guess what? God's never had to eat his word. When God speaks, he speaks to accomplish a purpose. And I ask us the question this morning, when God moves, we want to use God's word. Where's my urgency? Verse 12 and 13, we're almost done. God moves when we want, verse 12 and 13, for you shall go out with joy. Can you say that, li- that line real loud with me? Can you say it with me? One, two, three. For ye shall go out with joy. This morning when we go out, I want us to go out in the spirit. When we go out this morning, I want us to go out not in your flesh or my flesh. I want us to go out in his spirit. Because when we do that, we can go out with joy. And it does change the way I treat people. And it does change what happens in moments of my life when I get irritated or upset or something of trouble hits me in the face. When I have joy, I have a different response than when I don't have joy. And I'm telling you this morning that the Lord's word will not return void. And we, want, we need to want his word. To use his word not only in me but others. But then we, number five, we're going to need to want to worship. I don't know if you do this, but I'm going to ask you to practice it this next week. Before you hit the church building, by the way, you are the church. The people are the church. When you hit the church building, before you get here next week, I want to encourage you to find a song that you're going to sing and worship. Look at your song list. Find your favorite song for this week. And I want you to sing that song. Listen to me. I want you to sing your song to God before you get in here. Can you say amen? And I want you to prepare yourself for worship together by preparing yourself with God alone. I don't care what song it is. You can listen to it on the way to church. You can sing it in your car. You can jam out. I don't care how you do it. You can be off pitch if you want. I don't care. That was funny, y'all. But you can sing it however you want to sing it, but I want you to sing it. And I want you to prepare your heart and say, God, I want to worship God. You, you deserve my worship. God, to you be all the glory, the praise, and the honor. Get me out of the way so you can have your way with your word, with my worship, with everything that I have, God, I want you to have. We have this huge invitation, but we also have the step of our own intention. What is my aim? And when we prepare ourselves before we get in this room, Our worship will be stronger. Our joy will be stronger. Our fight will be stronger. And I want you to see this word joy. Make a little side note. 
and, and this is the word S-I-M-H-A. That is the original word for joy here. And it means, we could say, happy issue. Ask the person next to you, do you have a happy issue? Right? You might have someone who has an attitude issue this week, but maybe you can find someone who's happy and go, hey, do you have a happy issue? Like you like got a problem being, being happy? Like you're happy, like you got an issue being happy all the time, not the bad side, like you got a happy issue, but you got a happy issue. Everybody say simha. The original for joy, simha in this passage. And you shall go out with joy. You shall go out with simha, pleasure, good results, happy issues, not the absence of troubles or trials, but you got simha. And you got a happy issue. And he says, and you shall be led forth with, what's the next word? Peace. You shall go out with joy, but then the next phrase is, and be led forth with peace. So out of the nine fruits of the Spirit, we got love, joy. Then what's next? Peace. So you want some peace? You better start with joy. And you better start before that with the love is the foundation. Because when you have God's love, His spirit of love, and His spirit of joy, peace follows and it leads you forth with peace. And now look at this. It says, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. The mountains and the hills of Hillsboro, Ohio, will break out before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall <laughs> clap their hands. And it says, I want you to see this. It's going to happen before you. And I want you to realize a couple things here as we cross this. When God's people turn to him and listen to him, and his word does his work in them, joy and peace are always the result. Do you want joy and peace? Do what Isaiah 55 says. And you'll have the simha you're looking for. See, the joy is so great that even the mountains and hills and the trees of the field join in with your worship. They don't start singing and you join in with them. You start singing and they join in with you. So as we finish this morning, See this last couple phrases. It says, instead of the thorns shall come up a, fig t- a fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. I hate thorns and briars, by the way, especially when I'm setting a tree stand. But it says, the thorns and the briars will be gone. It says, I want you to see this. Instead of those shall come up this other, and it shall be to the Lord for a what? For a name. It's for his name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. I want us to realize that God's, God's glory is, is the purpose. God's glory of, of removing these things in our life will be evident all around, of, all around us. And it will bring the beauty of the fruit that he desires to bring. When the Lord restores, all the work is done in his name and for his glory. When the Lord restores, the work is secure. So a couple thoughts as we finish. Joy moves when God moves. Can you say that with me? Joy moves when God moves. Where do I need to move? Number four, where do I need to move? So God can move. So my joy can move. I want you to ask yourself the question, where do I need to move? According to Isaiah 55, where do I need to move so God can move, so my joy can move? This morning, if you put your hands out again, if you put your hands out again and say, God, in in these areas that we spoke about in Isaiah 55, what is the level of my urgency? Where am I at in my urgency? God, where am I at? when it comes to my desire for your word? Am I really seeking you? What am I doing with forgiveness? What am I doing with my thoughts? What am I doing with my worship? And I want to encourage you next week to sing your song before you get to his house and say, God, I want to worship you 
And even tomorrow morning, maybe find that song and say, God, I'm going to start out every day with my worship song. I want to sing to you. I want your word. I want you to move. And I want you to realize this, that you need to move so God can move, so your joy can move. So joy moves when God moves. How do you and I need to move today? Would you bow for a word of prayer? With your heads bowed this morning, I just want to share a short story. In November of 22, I got in my truck and I drove to Tennessee. And there was one reason I went there. And it was to seek the Lord while he was near. What is the level of you seeking him? Maybe this morning you're here and you say, Matt, I've never trusted Jesus as my savior. I've never deliberately asked him to take away my sin. And that's where I'm at is I'm on this, this step of trusting him for the first time. This morning, our deacon families, our leadership team is here to answer those questions. This morning, would you say, Matt, I have questions about eternity. I don't know if I've ever asked Jesus to save me, and I want to have that secure in my life. But if you're a believer this morning, you say, where do I need to move so God can move, so joy can move in my life? I want you to ask that question. I want you to put it in your hand, and I want you to bring it to him this morning. Say, God, I need to start fighting for joy. I'm kind of playing a game with joy and not fighting for joy. What step do you need to make today? Can I ask you just to lift your hand if God mentioned something to you in Isaiah 55? Would you just raise your hand this morning and say, God spoke to me. God moved in my heart this morning. Would you raise your hand and say, God, there's my hand. Thank you for moving in my heart today. Thank you for uh, reminding me of something or sharing something new. Would you just lift it up and leave it up this morning? Say, Lord, here's my hand. I heard you this morning speak to me. You may put your hands down. I want to encourage you this morning. While the instrument plays, will you just begin stepping out? Would you just slip out right now? Would you just come and find your place here at the altar? Would you come right now? Just step out. Say, God, I, I heard you talk to me, and Lord, I want to come, and I want to share what you said with me. I want to share my thoughts with you. God, I want to hear your thoughts for me. Would you just slip out right now? This is your call. This is your... You're welcome to come. I'm asking you right now not to wait till we begin to sing, but right now just slip out. Say, God, here's my heart this morning. Here's this step in my heart. Here's something that I heard you say to me this morning. Lord, here it is. Lord, this is where I need to move so you can move so my joy will move. Lord, here's my life. Here's this. Here's this. Maybe you'd say this morning, Lord, I've been getting my word. I've been getting my joy, but I haven't been sharing that joy. I haven't been giving that word to someone else. Maybe that's you this morning. Lord, as we come to you, we ask God that you would move in our hearts and our lives. Thank you for what you've done, and thank you for Isaiah 55 that gives us this invitation to come to you. Lord, it gives to us our next step for our life, God. It helps us to, to step out and do what needs to be done, Lord. We, we have the invitation, and God, I know that you're getting our attention, and God, you're getting America's attention, and maybe that needs to be our prayer. God, help us to get the attention of our country. That God, as we speak your word, we will be a tool used to Get the attention of others. God, help us to walk in your fullness. So God, whatever it is this morning that we need to do, to find forgiveness or to give it, to find your thoughts, to find where and how you want us to use your word, and maybe my worship has not been what it needs to be. God, help us to move where you want us to move so your joy can change our lives as we fight for joy. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand?